Tomorrow is shaping up to be by far the biggest day of earnings season and could drive the markets much higher or much lower. We have some alarming statistics about this earnings season so far that might just prove the bears right. Maybe there could be a lot more downside from here. We're really seeing historical, unprecedented reactions following even good earnings. We have all of that for you in this video. On top of that, we are going to get some economic data coming out tomorrow. We have some Tesla stock news to go over, but what you guys might find the most exciting is if we do see a downturn in the markets, this should mean yields continue to go lower like we've seen today. This should be bullish for Tesla. And a matter of fact, there was over one and a half billion dollars bought in bullish Tesla options today. And this option activity was massively skewed towards bullish positioning. So nonetheless, we do have a lot to get into in this video in a very short amount of time. This one is very important. Hit the like button if you own Tesla stock or if you wanna buy more Tesla stock as well as subscribe to the channel if you want to become a wiser, more profitable investor and or trader. And if you would like to take it a step further, come trade with us, especially during this earnings season. There can be some massive profits to be had. I do have a couple of, of trades already on stocks that report earnings tomorrow. If you guys want to see those trades and future trades, it's never financial advice or a recommendation to buy or sell anything. 87% of options expire worthless, but we do have a specific strategy we like to employ during option during earnings season with options that make your risk to reward a lot more favorable if you are someone that does trade earnings, but we do it all. So come join us if you would like. Link down below in the description of this video. So let's start with Tesla stock. Some people were a little bit confused by the title of the last video. We've seen an epic bounce back today. At the low, you were trading at $202.51. You almost broke under $200 per share. Tesla stock then proceeded to rally over $11 to where we are right now at $213.14 per share. You can explain this two different ways. There was a lot of bullish positioning in Tesla. The option activity was very bullish with a lot of dollars heading into Tesla options. And number two, yields went lower today. That is good for your auto sector. Anything that really has to do with financing is going to benefit when yields do go lower. That's why a lot of your small caps outperform today, or at least some of the small cap stocks that I own and you might know, some of your more quality small cap stocks definitely outperformed. Tesla's option activity today was impressive. $1.55 billion bought in Tesla options with a 70% positive order value. There was over 1,100 individual hedge fund and institutional trades. This is only hedge fund and institutional trades. This does not take into consideration retail investors. What's actually interesting about today, if you take a holistic look at the option activity, total options volume in Tesla stock today was 2.21 million versus the open interest of 7.19 million. That is a very large amount. That's about 30% of the total open interest being traded today in Tesla volume. That's impressive. But if you look at the calls total volume, 1.18 million, the puts was at 1.03 million. This is closer to a 50, 55% positive order value. So it looks like hedge funds and institutions today we're more bullish than retail investors, and they tend to have more information than we do. They tend to know a little bit more of what's to come maybe in the markets. They have hedge fund buddies. They run the algorithms that control about 80% of the stock trading that happens every single day. I don't know about you guys, but if you're looking at the option activity for really any given stock, but especially Tesla with a large retail investor base, I would much rather see hedge funds and institutions more bullish than retail investors. That's just me personally, especially on a stock like Tesla that is very under owned by Wall Street. This shows Wall Street wants more bullish positions on Tesla. But unfortunately, there's two things that affect Tesla, Tesla news and Tesla events and the broader markets. A lot of people understand Tesla news affects Tesla, but a lot of people don't understand the broader markets and what happens in the markets also affects Tesla. And tomorrow is going to be 
by far the most important day for earnings season and really could set the tone for the broader markets. Tomorrow morning, you're going to have a couple important companies that report earnings, but nothing that is going to move the markets. Companies such as Coca-Cola, Verizon, GE, RTX, 3M, Spotify, Next Era Energy, and GM. Tomorrow and after hours is really the cake, if you will. The rest of earnings season is going to be the icing, and then an apple is really going to be your sprinkles, for a terrible analogy sake. Microsoft and Alphabet, better known as Google. These two stocks alone control 16.4% of the market weighting in the NASDAQ. So think about it like this. If Microsoft or, or Alphabet, Google, fall 5% apiece, and that's their average move, that's going to bring down the NASDAQ, the QQQ, by almost 1%, let alone the sympathy reaction of any other stock out there in Apple really incorporating them, you could easily see a 1.5%, 2% down move if these companies perform poorly on earnings. The unfortunate about what I just said is although Microsoft and Google are high quality companies, they're probably going to beat on earnings. Even stocks that are beating on earnings are still getting punished. And it makes matters worse that they're trading near all-time highs. If you do see more fears out there, geopolitical fears, recession fears, data fears, which kind of coincides with recession fears, you're probably going to get a really bad result from these earnings because they're priced for basically perfection heading into 2024. And right now, Wall Street is positioning for 2024. Microsoft was up almost 1% today, up almost another half of 1% in after hours. So it's not like you sold off heading into earnings. Same thing with Google, up 1% today, up another 0.62% in after hours. And again, trading near all-time highs. You're way closer to all-time highs than you are to the 2022 lows or pre-pandemic lows. You're hundreds of percents higher on both of these names. They're priced for perfection. So I went ahead and took myself out of the frame so you guys can see this chart in its entirety. This is of the S&P 500 firms that miss EPS and sales estimates. They are getting punished. So your one day return if you beat on EPS is negative. It's negative about 0.2%. If you miss on EPS, your one day return is almost negative 4%. On sales, if you beat on sales, you're still falling about 0.4%. Your one day return if you miss on sales is about 3.5%. Now your EPS and sales, a one day return on a beat is flat. Basically nothing happens. If you miss the average stock so far in this earnings season is falling over 6%. That's egregious. Morgan Stanley's Mike Wilson says the next rally attempt will fail as investors are punishing earnings reports. And to the previous point, look at this. This is the average return from any company that reports earnings on the S&P 500 by quarter reporting periods. You're at negative 0.8% so far for Q3 earnings. You have never been this negative in a long time, even in good quarters like Q3 2022, the average stock was going up 0.6% following earnings the next day in Q4 2021, a great period for your index investor. That's when the markets hit their all-time highs. Again, 0.6% was the average gain for any stock after earnings. Now it's almost a loss of 1%. If Microsoft and Google do not give us the best possible earnings report, they are going to fall. That could end up wreaking havoc on our markets, considering, again, Microsoft and Google account for over 16% of the market weighting in the NASDAQ. And just to give you guys a little bit of a reference here on how these stocks could perform if they have bad earnings, NVIDIA has been the standout stock for earnings. They have massively guided above all expectations. They have beat on the largest scale and degree of any other stock out there on the markets over the past two earnings 
not including this earnings they're going to report in about a month or so but the last two earnings nvidia has killed it what happened last earnings well nvidia initially went up about 0.10 percent the following day you were up a lot on nvidia at one point over 10 percent and the stock sold all of it off by the end of the day you hit a high of $502.62. By the next day, you were at 450. And you seen an EPS beat of like 100% higher than expectations. Revenue was over 3 billion higher than expectations, and Nvidia guided over 3 billion more than Wall Street was expecting, and the stock still fell. Well, why? Because the stock was at all-time highs. And you could argue that was already baked into NVIDIA. I could make a valid argument that at 33 times earnings for Microsoft, their good results are priced in. If they have bad results, yeah, it could be ugly. And it could get ugly quickly. Same goes for a Google as well. This chart is showing you the implied volatility or implied movement of these stocks that are going to be reporting earnings. So Google has a 6% plus or minus up or down move priced into the options. Microsoft is sitting at about 5%. So if we're correct in pricing in the expected move, you're going to get a 5 plus percent move for both of these names. If they both head downwards, that could put like I said, one plus percent, one to two percent downside pressure on the broader indexes. Same is true if these stocks somehow rally, then that would put a lot of upside pressure on our markets. And you guys can pause the video if you would like to see what all of these stocks are pricing in. Meta, AMT, and Intel are by far pricing in the most, and that is for an over seven percent plus or minus move, which I did make a trade on Microsoft as well as RTX. This is actually one of the lowest implied moves for Microsoft that you have seen in years for Microsoft earnings. Less than 5% is typically not expected from Microsoft. Microsoft's usually 6 to 7% for its implied movement. So I do think there is some potential profits here, especially if Microsoft did move like 10% or Google did move like 10%. So far, Mike Wilson says the market has reacted more negatively to results than even what he called the sell the news second quarter was. The average one day stock price change for a company reporting results so far is a drop of 1.6% compared to a decline of 0.5% last quarter. So if you miss and your stock's going down, it's going down a lot more than even what you've seen last quarter. There's also a smaller percentage of positive reactions. With several of the mega cap leaders reporting this week, this trend bears close watching, says Wilson. What's also interesting is that financials are actually beating EPS estimates the most out of tech, out of discretionary, industrials, utilities, staples, communication services, materials, real estate, healthcare. Financials are actually doing the best and they are doing pretty much the worst. If you look at any financial, if you look at any bank, they're not doing great. But they're actually beating to the highest degree compared to any other sector so far. That just shows you how disaligned our markets are. Wilson adds that the breadth of the market continues to exhibit notable weaknesses. While some may interpret this as a bullish signal, i.e. oversold conditions, we believe it is a reflection of our longstanding view that we remain in a late cycle backdrop where earnings fundamentals remain at risk, he says. Wilson also said it was positive that the S&P 500 dropped below its 200-day moving average on Friday. We would not be surprised to see a further move lower in price this week below the early October lows before the next attempted rally. However, based on our views on earnings, valuations, and policy, both monetary and fiscal, we believe the S&P 500 will have a hard time getting back above where we were previously above levels of support in between four 
4,300 and 4,400 tactically, he said. If you trade on the SPY, that would be in between 430 and 440. Right now, the SPY is around 421. He said it's more likely the index will catch up to the average stock performance than the other way around. So he's comfortable with the 3,900 year end target. He's basically saying instead of all of your stocks moving higher from here and catching up to big tech stocks that have led the markets higher, you're probably more likely going to see big tech stocks come down to match what other stocks have done this year. Keep in mind, the equal weighted S&P is down like 14% or some crazy number for this year. It has not been good for any of the magnificent seven stocks that They've done fine. Any Everyone else has basically done poorly besides another small subsector of the markets. By and large, you haven't seen good returns this year from your average stock. He thinks big tech goes lower here into the end of the year. This, I think, is also pretty telling and really shows you the divergence here. This blue line is the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. And this orange line is the S&P 500. What you'll notice here is they're usually correlated to a certain degree. If stocks are doing well, then usually more stocks than not are above their 200-day moving average. Well, what you're seeing now is stocks are still, like I said previously, about 29% above their October lows, as you can see from my cursor. These were the October lows. But if you look at the average stock, you're still trading near your October lows for the percentage of stocks above their 200-day moving average. This just shows you under the surface, stocks are not doing well at all. Whereas the broader indexes, sure, they've fallen a little bit, but there could be a lot of catching up to do if this earnings season is a disaster, in which it could be. Definitely the biggest piece of news today was the fact that Bill Ackman says he covered their bond short. He says there is too much risk in the world to remain short at at current long-term rates. The economy is slowing faster than recent data suggests. So he's saying, with, with the fear out there, geopolitical tensions, all of that, and the data just not really reflecting the broader economy, that means that longer-term yields are probably going to come down. That means investors will buy the bonds. Investors buy bonds during geopolitical times of tension because they want safety. And also, if the Fed's going to cut rates, bond prices will go higher, thus bond yields will go lower. Again, it works like a dividend stock. So not to be too doom and gloomy here in this video, I'm not exactly bullish on the markets right here, but if bond yields do continue to go down in the short term, that could fuel a rally. But you have to remember, heading into the end of the year, the end of this month, throughout the rest of earnings season, why bond yields are falling is very important. Do, are bond yields falling because inflation's falling and the Fed's turning more dovish? Or are bond yields falling because people are fearful and people are expecting a recession? Those are two very different things. And that's important because eventually, after the algorithms trade the markets based on what's happening with the bond yields, people will digest, hey, is this a good move down in yields? Is this a bad move down in yields? That's important. Let's now discuss some of the data coming out tomorrow and the rest of this week. So tomorrow, you're going to get two data reports that people care about, but they're not big market movers. Number one is going to be S&P Global Composite PMI. You're expecting this to go into a contractionary level again. Anything under 50 is contractionary, and you're expecting 49.8. Last month's number was 50.2. So that's interesting. Considering on Thursday, we're expecting an over 4% GDP print for Q3. But yet you're seeing contraction in a lot of other data reports, including personal spending, which comes out on Friday, which accounts for about 70% of the economy. So maybe Bill Ackman knows something, or maybe he's just thinking about this logically. How's GDP going to come in so high? And the economy is doing fine when all of your other data reports are telling you the opposite. Auto loan delinquencies 
just hit a new low that you have not seen since 1994, but yet we're expecting over 4% GDP for Q3. Something is not right here. Time for uh, today's Executive Edge. Higher vehicle prices and borrowing costs putting pressure on the consumer. More Americans now falling behind on their car payments. Fitch says the percent of subprime borrowers were at least now 60 days late. It rose by 6.1% in September. That's the highest level since 1994. And the figure was just below 6% in January, Joe. We keep seeing like these one-offs that, uh, and this number, this GDP number is supposed to, have you seen estimates for what it could be? No. It could be, I, I got to make sure that the number I saw is possible, but I mean, we're talking much more, much higher. Like we'd be the global leader by, by far. Our economy would be, except for China, but which is still, but uh, China's come down, but so. much better. Uh, and still, we, a lot of people just aren't feeling it. And this is one another example of that. The second piece of data we are going to get is Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index, Richmond Fed Services Index. You're expecting both of these to decline. Your services index, you're expecting that to go to one. Last month, it was at four. And your manufacturing index for the Richmond Fed, you're expecting that at negative one. Last month was at a five. So this data can move the markets a little bit initially, but the big focus is going to be on earnings tomorrow and after hours. So I'm, I'm not convinced this is going to give you the craziest move for our markets Wednesday could be an important day with Bank of Canada, their interest rate decision. If they decide to raise rates or pause or do something unexpected, that could definitely move the markets. And we're actually expecting the Bank of Canada to raise rates. So if they don't raise rates, well, that could move our markets. Don't hold your breath for it, but it could. Thursday, again, is going to be your big data report. This will have the biggest effect on bond yields because if GDP comes in, Four percent. You're expecting in between 4.1 and 4.7 percent. That would put the U.S. as basically the best country in the world for GDP growth, which is just astronomical, right? That's that's hard to fathom. The number one economy being the fastest growing economy. Who knows if these are, you know, phony numbers here? It's 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 hard to conceive a four plus percent GDP report, but that's what we're expecting. So on one hand, if the GDP report comes in line with expectations and it is really strong, investors might say, hey, that means the Fed's going to have to raise rates again. Bond yields might shoot up higher. If it comes in at, call it 2%, 3%, investors are going to say, hey, maybe that means no more rate hikes. Maybe that means more rate cuts coming in 2024 or at least no more hikes. And bond yields might be somewhat stable or fall a little bit. If GDP massively misses expectations, let's say comes in less than two, one, one and a half percent, well, bond yields could probably fall a lot because then the markets are gonna say, hey, maybe we're a lot closer to a recession than we previously thought. This is the exact data report I have been looking forward to for over a month that I have said very clearly could be a black swan event, depending on how this comes out. And again, if the markets rally off of a bad GDP report, just remember, that's not good news. I would much rather have the markets sell off on good news than to rally on bad news. If you are a investor in our markets, if you're a trader, then you probably don't care. But if you're an investor, you own stocks like a Tesla for the long term, you don't want to see bad news. You don't want to see bad data. That's just the bottom line. Now, a quick update on this Israeli conflict in the Middle East. As you know, this is the biggest catalyst that could potentially move our markets, but the highest likelihood of moving our markets, it could be down 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 percent. I don't think earnings are going to come in super bad and cause a big drop. It's possible, but I don't think that's probable at this point. It's possible the data came out really bad and could be a black swan event, but it's not as likely as this conflict in the Middle East spreading into something much larger with big economic impacts and consequences, especially for oil. That has a much higher likelihood than the latter of what I just said. So I think it's important to stay up to date with this information, but hopefully things go back to normal and business as usual, and we can get through this. This is being reported to us. So 
A classified House briefing on Iran, initially scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m., has been postponed to 3.30 p.m. due to votes, per an email obtained by Axios. It will cover Iran's nuclear plus missile and drone programs, the hostage deal, and Iran's support for Hamas slash Hezbollah. The fact that they postpone this means it's probably not a big deal. Usually you don't postpone things that cannot wait. So I see that as a little bit of good news. Iranian propaganda channels are claiming that the Ar- Arleigh Burke class destroyer USS Kearney DDG-64 has been attacked with drones in the Red Sea off the coast of Yemen. There is so far no evidence of this have happened. As OSIN T Defender says, this is not even an aircraft carrier. This looks, this is more of what that ship looks like. So it seems like it's a rumor right now. There may have been some kind of combat that took place, and it's not great that Iran is spreading this false information. But we'll have to wait and see. Any escalation in this Middle East conflict is not going to be great. For stocks, that's really the bottom line here. Another Hezbollah fighter has been eliminated, bringing the total to about 31 since the start of this war with Hamas. Stock futures at the time of recording this video, Nasdaq's up 0.32%, S&P is up 0.28%, and the Dow is up 0.21%. Tesla's stock in overnight trading is currently up almost 1%, trading at just under $214 per share. And there you can see it, it just flipped to $214 per share. So Tesla stock is going to be heavily manipulated by what happens in the markets. Over the next 24, 20 hours or so, if Microsoft and Google have bad earnings, it could be a bigger catalyst to send the indexes lower. But what I will say is even if the indexes go lower, like Mike Wilson says from Morgan Stanley, it could be one of those things where not all stocks do poorly, but maybe your big tech stocks do, you know, worse than your average stock that is already in the gutter, right? Even a Tesla, a PayPal, a Fubo, a Croc, some of these stocks I own are just completely beaten down at this point. Maybe those don't do as bad as the broader indexes, the stocks that control the broader indexes, and those stocks just come down. We get a re-rating of really what to expect. The markets right now have 12% growth expected for the next two years from company earnings in the S&P 500. At a time where Fed funds rates are 5.5%, it looks like we are teetering into a recession. That is just way too high. And we're probably going to get some kind of forward-looking guidance from a Microsoft or a Google for 2024 and other stocks as well. Visa will also be an important one. And this could also be the biggest driving factor of the reactions following earnings. So hopefully after this video, you feel a little bit smarter, a little bit more informed about our markets and what to look out for going ahead over the next couple of days and or couple of weeks. If you do, consider subscribing to the channel. If you guys want to take it a step further, come get access to all of my trades in real time. Every time I make a trade, you get notified. Check that out. Link down below in the description of this video. I'm not a financial advisor. It is never financial advice or recommendation to buy or sell anything. 87% or more of options on any given expiration expire worthless. That's why it's so profitable to sell options and not buy them. We don't sell options all too much. We like to uh, make the big money. So it can be risky. So never listen to anything I say. Anything can happen in the markets. Be prepared for any and all outcomes. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day and nights, and I will see you in the next one.